Hey guys, Wages World here. August 19th, uh, 2020. Coming at you with a video. We got lots to talk about, guys. We got, you know, asteroids they didn't see that set a record coming real close to our planet. Um, we got two big earthquakes, actually three, if you consider the one that happened last, you know, earlier on. And, you know, obviously we got um, solar flares and stuff that we need to talk about. So I'm going to get just jump into it here. Um, Brad Kiefer. When it hits, will the USA be facing the sun, or does that even matter for solar flares and CMEs? Brad, thanks for that question. It's a great question. Um, yes, it does, and no, it doesn't. Okay? <laughs> um, if, if we get a big one, like we just take out a bunch of power lines and stuff, it's not going to matter what side of the planet you're on. That energy is going to hit us, and it's going to come in through the poles mostly, and that's how it'll get to the other side of the planet. Um, also, you know, yes, the front side will get hit just a little, little harder. Okay, but will we even know it if we don't have technology to talk to each other with? That's my kind. That's kind of my point there. Now, if it's a smaller one, yes, we we will be able to know, tell the difference a lot easier because just like the other day when remember I showed you guys that the United States was on the dark side when we got hit with that flare and it and it actually had radio brownouts on the other side of the planet. That's the difference you would see. But for the big ones, it's probably not going to matter a whole lot. So, great question. Um, Jerry Cohen here says, Blue, I start my day with you after bagpipes, that is. Uh, top of the morning to you. He says, I love your videos. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Um, Jerry, I'm not sure if you're a, if you're a man or a woman. I'm, I apologize. I can't tell by the, the name because that's a you know, name could go either way. Um, but th these are the kind of comments that just humble me just to the no end. Um, you know, guys, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate stuff like this because I never, ever expected for somebody to want to listen to me first thing in the morning. <laughs> um, and you know, they really held, you know, they wanted to hear what I had to say. Um, I just can't tell you guys how much, how humbling that is because that's the only reason why I'm showing you this. Cause I want you guys to know how much I appreciate you. Um, it's not about me having any kind of knowledge here. You know, I know you said, thank you for sharing your knowledge. But let me tell you guys something. I learned so much more from you guys and what you guys say than when I could ever teach you guys. Um, I, I've said that since day one, and it and it, it's held true to this time. So thank you guys for everything, all the, all this stuff that you throw at me, all this love and stuff. I mean, it, it's awesome because it does. It puts a smile on my face, and it keeps me motivated. And I hope you guys let me read in these comments because it, it gives me a better way to communicate with you guys without having to put hearts and everything on all the... Sometimes a thousand plus comments I get. So, um, yes, I hope you guys like it that way. Um, I really can't go back the other way because I just don't, I simply don't have the time to do all that. So, thanks guys. I really appreciate this. Jerry, awesome. Brad, awesome question. So, we'll move on. Um, anyway, guys, we got uh, this asteroid that came really close. What's crazy is they didn't see it. Now, I have to say this, guys, they're not going to see everything. Okay, again, Billy Bob Thornton, he said it in, Astro in uh, Armageddon, remember? <laughs> you know, it's a begging your pardon, Mr. President, it's a big-ass sky. And what he was referring to is, you know, he, they're not going to be able to see everything. Yes, they can see more now, but they still can't see everything. Well, what's kind of crazy about this one, this one did set a record. And the record that it set was it came closer than any space rock had ever come to our planet without crashing into our planet, or at least getting sucked into the atmosphere. Okay, that's the record that it set. Now, remember I said, you guys, this is the, this is the graph over at spaceweather.com. If you guys come over here and look at this, uh, this graph, like, you know, like a lot of you already are, because I've seen comments and emails and stuff, um, you're going to notice, and, and some of you are, have already noticed, that you'll look at it one day, you come back the next, and there'll be an extra asteroid in there in there kind of in the middle somewhere that wasn't there the day before and you ask yourself why well the reason why is because they just discovered it and to, to prove what i'm saying here um hold on one second okay so what i'm saying here guys is if you look at the dates on these they always put the date the year before the name typically every one of those is 2020 that tells you that they didn't see those until 2020. That's what that means, guys. 
okay so if we're going to look at the distance here this is what got me because i've never come over here and um seen it say zero ld lunar distance lunar distance is the distance between us and the sun and the sun but the moon and for it to say zero it really kind of grabs you and you're looking at this well if you look up here it says 0 0.7 and then there was one down here it was like 0 0.9 yeah there it is right here okay so what that means is that they it would be less than 0 0.1 that's why they didn't show it here so how close did it come well it came within 1830 miles about a quarter of the the um diameter of our planet it came so close that it that it changed the, the trajectory of this space rock in a very dramatic way almost 90 degrees it looks like it's kind of crazy guys um they did not see this till six hours after it passed and they seen it by a ground-based telescope okay so this is a little bit more information on it and it it's telling you how big it is about 18 feet 18 by 6 it says um which again is probably like a, a extended cab truck or a, a large car or what have you suv type of thing um so what would it do if one of those was actually of that site if it got into our atmosphere of that size well guys it probably wouldn't do a whole lot because it would probably burn up before it got here even if it's made up of the most dense material that we could make it up of right um, the one that happened over in Russia a few years back, that actually didn't hit the planet either. It exploded above the planet. And the big air, the big air rush that happened when that with that explosion is what caused all the damage. So that, you know, I'm not sure exactly how big they said that one was, but I don't think this one was even close to the size that one was. Um, so again, we're seeing, you know, I showed you guys the one in China the other day, uh, yesterday. Um, plus we've seen the other ones guys they're, they're all over the place but remember our technology is better we got cameras and camcorders in our hand 100 percent of the time we can simply just hit go throw your phone up in the air take your little video or whatever and you can still you can email that data to whoever you need to email it right then that's that's what we're talking about guys communication is so much better that that's why all this record keeping is getting like this okay so these this space age record yes we're probably going to continue to see stuff like that until it catches up to where we're seeing enough of it that it kind of flattens out so that's what i'm trying to say so the number that we're actually seeing is kind of skewed because sometimes i i really truly think that the stuff that we do see was probably already there and always has been we just didn't see it so, naturally, that would cause that number to go up. You guys understand that? I hope you, I hope I explained that well enough. But, yeah. So, guys, Scott wrote an article on, on this over at planetxnews.org. And um, I would suggest anybody go over here and check this one out, especially. Um, so, we're going to click on it right here. And we're going to just go down through here a little bit. Because I want to show you this one graphic he's got here. Um, look. Look at that. You see, the tra you see the trajectory change in that space rock? <laughs> Almost 90 degrees, guys. Um, that's, that's impressive. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Now, Scott goes into very much detail how fast this thing was moving, all, all that kind of stuff in this article. I think he's even got a, a, a time lapse you guys would probably really want to come over here and take a look at. Um, it, shows, it shows in motion what this thing did. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, not to mention, he, he did a good job writing the information on the article and stuff, too. So this is uh, over at planetxnews.org. I'll leave a link to this. But this is most definitely one of those asteroids that we really need to look at because they didn't see it. It set records. There's a lot of lot of crazy stuff around this thing. So, Okay, guys, this is the Schumann. Um, and obviously, guys, you see that spike right there. Now, I would venture to say that that was probably around the time of some of these earthquakes. Um, plus, we were, we were in that Perseid meteor shower for, you know, a few days there. We're probably still coming out of, like, the tail end of that anyway. Um, but, you know, 
Is that what caused this spike? Could have been. Um, or was it one of the solar flares or CMEs that fired off the sun? Could have been. You know, all that, you know, comes into play. And this is where it comes with uh, with Brad's question earlier on in this video that wherever these detectors are on that side of the planet, if that was facing the sun when that flare flew off of it, it most certainly would pick have picked that up. And then on the back side of the planet, probably not so much. So that is one of the differences that you can see. Um, the frequency here has changed. Obviously, it's a spike. Now, is it a huge one? No. But is it significant? Yes. Um, and the fact that if you look around the whole rest of the graph, you don't see much. Plus, you can probably tie that to some of the earthquake stuff that's going on. So that's what I would say to that. Okay, guys. This is over at uh, Space Weather uh, Prediction Center. We're going to take a look at these uh, space weather conditions. And what I want you guys to notice is that, you know, we had that uh, a smaller flare the other day. It got to like a B1. You can kind of see it right there. Okay. These are just as high right now. And what's happened is our base has kind of come up. So any kind of flaring that's going on is going to raise that x-ray flux up into that you know, the next level. Um, so, you know, I would say that that probably corresponds with what we were just talking about. I would say that probably the Schumann reaction happened at about that same time. Okay, so whatever caused all that, it's hitting all these tools. Just so you know. Plus, look, the geomagnetic activity went up at the same time too. So there's another one that's saying, hey, yes, we're being affected by something. Whether it's solar wind, whether it's this, whether it's that, CME, you know, all asteroid, whatever we're talking about. Um, so, yeah. So, if we go over here and we look at the sun right now, <clears throat> what I would point out first and foremost is we got, you know, these active areas here. But we also got coronal holes, guys. I, I started touching on this yesterday and the day before. You see the big dark patches. That's just letting out charged particles left and right. Okay. So I think what's going on and what we're seeing, you know, you got the, the earthquake, not the earthquake, but the equator right there. And the earth kind of sits just to the south of the equator. So, you know, like this corona hole over here, when it was right in the middle, like right in there, this sunspot that gave us that big flare was over here. So I'm showing you this because, let me do it this way. Um... So that corona hole went through us first, right? So we got we guess we start getting solar wind from that, right? So and then right after that, this sunspot that was down here fired that that CME. And then there's more corona holes behind it. So what I'm saying is you're getting increased geomagnet geomagnetic activity, then a solar flare CME slash plus more stuff, right? And then more corona holes after that. So what I'm trying to tell you here is I think for about the next week, we're probably going to have to deal with an uptick in overall geomagnetic activity, if not geomagnetic storms. I think that when this CME hits us, it most it, it could possibly put us into like a G, G level 2 storm. Um, mo more likely would be more of a G1 unless we get a bunch of extra energy from the coronal holes. Or the CME could actually be a little bit stronger than what people think it is. That's happened before too. So I do think that we'll probably get into storm level. What does that mean? Not much other than, you know, earthquakes, guys. Earthquakes, aurora photographers love this kind of stuff. Because what happens is, you know, we start seeing auroras down, down closer towards the equator with what we call mid-latitudes. Um, high latitude would be up towards the pole. Zero latitude would be the equator. See what I'm getting at there? Most of us know how that works, but I know that there are a few that, that don't know what that actually is. Um, you know, it's been a long time since a lot of us have been in high school, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's what I would say to that. But we can't let our guards down, guys. So we got the ACE data here, and um, this is something that I've been paying attention to because... We now have, you know, we're getting this uh, little, what I call popcorn, right? 
it's conditions that are fluctuating really close to each other. In other words, it's real high, then it goes to real low. Real high, real low. And it's doing it very, very frequently. So I started seeing that on the temperature, which is the green. The wind speed itself is yellow. The orange is the density. Okay. Now, if we keep in mind what we're actually looking at here, we have to look at the... It's already at the top of the graph, right? So we have to go over here and look what range it's showing us. We're talking about 100 on the density level there. That's high, guys. I mean, that's really high. Uh, it's not we haven't it's not like we've never seen that before but that is still really high dense material guys and all the tools are reacting everything so you know what is the cme getting here early Do, or is it that corona hole that was in front of us or is it both okay so what they're expecting guys and i showed you guys this yesterday also this is that cme you know you can see it here too but you can also see where the conditions of uh, Stereo A are going to be fluctuating too. And for those that don't know, there's the Earth, there's the Sun, this is Stereo A. So when we're looking from Stereo A, we're looking at the side of the Sun, you know, compared to our position from the Earth. So I want people to see that too, because it, it, it does put a different spin on it for you guys. Um, but... Most definitely, we're going to take a hit there. Um, how big it gets, you know, again, I, I can't say. Um, but I just gave you my opinion on what I thought could happen. So, you know, in my opinion, at the high end, probably a G2. At the low end, you know, I guess we may not get into G1 storm level. We could just get to like a 4 on the KP, which would be just uh, very active conditions is what they would consider that. Um, you know, you get to a five on the KP, that's the first level of a geomagnetic storm. And what I'm talking about there, so in case you guys are confused there a little bit, because I haven't spoke about that in a while. Um, let me pause it. So what we're talking about here, guys, the KP is, uh, sorry about that. It's over here. The G, G, G storm levels are over here. Okay, so you can see directly that a KP of five equals a G level one storm. So if somebody's throwing those KP numbers at you, that's what that means. Okay. Or the G or the geomagnetic storm levels, you can actually revert it backwards to the KP. So, um, that's what they're talking about there. All right, guys, this is the geoelectric field model. This is the one I show you guys. It, and this is basically our electrical grid and space weather's interaction with it and what it could be doing. Um, as you can see, we're getting some action, and that's that would be very much expected with what everything I just showed you. Okay, um, I'm going to take you guys over to seeds here in a minute, and let you guys see a couple of the CMEs and stuff that's going on there too. But yeah, look at that. I mean, we're it's not huge right now, but I do think it's probably going to uptick. Okay, um, as this CME comes in, it'll be very very interesting to see what this thing does. Um, again, I. I you know, pretty much 100% positive this will react. So, <laughs> okay, this is Lasco C2. Um, this is the one I show you guys uh, from Seeds. It's from our perspective. It's as if we went outside and looked up at the sun, okay? And um, that's what you would be looking at. And I already talked about this, what, this CME here on the right. Okay, I already talked about all that in my previous video. And I've seen a couple uh, other little strange things here I want to I want to show you guys, okay? Plus, you know, like I said, we had another little one over there. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing like spiraling. And it's it's really strange. I've seen spiraling before, but not like this. Okay? Um I'm going to slow it down. Well, we'll we'll run it through at full full speed here in a minute right here. But see that right there? It almost looked like a a candy cane pole moving, like an old barbershop pole. How they used to spin, black, white, black, white, you know, spinning like that. Um, but they were, and I think they were red and white. Yeah, they were red and white then, but this right here with it being a black and white version, that's what we're going to see right here. So you're seeing that. Now, it also very much resembles what we've seen over here at the same time on the other side. 
See, so watch it spin too. See how it spun like that? Now I'm going to slow it down so you guys can see that a little bit better. But um, we don't typically see these things do this. Um, they are most definitely spinning. Okay, like going around. And what this looks like to me, and I'm not sure if this is actually what's going on. We know that the charged particles that leave the sun, how they get to earth, which is what we call the solar wind. It follows that connection between the sun and the earth. That connection line, the interplanetary magnetic field line that we are connected to the sun with, you know, the charged particles, they stay on that line and they spiral all the way to us. The more dense ones will stay closer to the center of that line and the less dense ones will spin out towards the, the outer areas, okay? But that's how they travel to us. That's almost what this looks like. Um, I'm not saying that that's what's going on, but that it most definitely is spiraling, okay? That's the first part of the CME right there. We already talked about that part. Um, and we could talk about also other stuff that we're seeing inside there, but we'll skip that for now. Um, but what you're seeing right here is that little spiraling motion I was telling you about. So if we go over here and we look at it, it's doing the same thing. So for two sides of the sun to be doing like a little spiraling action, that's strange to me. Okay? And I just wanted you guys to see it. Because I don't know what's causing that. Because it most certainly looks like it's spiraling. And if it is a connection, well then what is this over here connecting to? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> or even that one over there. Because Earth is like, like I said, Earth in a position right here. Looking up at the sun. Right? We're way far back, but still. Okay, this is Stereo A, guys. I want to show it to you real quick, too. Again, the Earth is basically about right here. Stereo A is here. Here's that CME. Now, this CME is not on the tracker right now. I checked. It's not there. The only one that's showing is the one that showed us the one we were going to hit, get hit with on the 20th. All right? But this is what you're seeing right here. Now, um... The perspective matters, guys, and that's how we determine direction on how these things are traveling. And um, But that's a significant ejection off the back side. Even though it looked like it was going directly to the left, it was actually going at an angle towards the back. So I just want you guys to understand perspective. I think it's important, okay? Because that helps us determine direction on whether or not it's going to affect us. That's the main reason. And just to give you another quick look at the CME, it's going to hit us. Um, that's the top-down view of our inner solar system. Earth is the yellow ball. Sun is the white one. Here's the side view. Bam. Okay. Here's the, the view that shows us our orbital line around the sun stretched out in a straight line. And again, anytime you see that little disruption or distortion in this, this that means it's going to hit wherever that's showing that. So, you know, we may not get like right in the middle of the hit of the CME, but I do think we're going to take a more direct blow than just a small little, you know, scratch or grazing. Um, I can't say for sure, but that's just my gut feeling right now. Hey guys, I got you over here at uh, USGS. We all know that that's the earthquake site. We also know that they do downgrade stuff almost every time. Why is that important? Well, because they're trying to skew the numbers to the effect that makes it not look as bad as what, it, as what it actually is. Like the percentage of what we're experiencing really should be higher than what they're telling us. Um, if you got any questions about that, go talk to Dutch Sense. <laughs> He'll tell you straight up. And so will Scott. Scott's been through it too. So anyway, um, if you go over here and you, you scroll on up over here, you see the red boxes here, or the red links. You click on those and it's going to take you to that specific earthquake. So we're going to click on the 6-9, which was the biggest one. And there was another one earlier on in the week. It was like a 6-3 or a 6-4, like a day or so ago, in the same area. This was out over water, so the initial concern would be what? Tsunami, right? If there is a tsunami or any kind of watch or warning for that, when you click on it to look at this, um, there would be a box over here. It looks like a wave. Okay? That simple. And then you click on that, and it would tell you whatever kind of warning or watch or lack of. Okay, so if you want to know like in-depth information about this particular earthquake, you see the blue link over here. Okay, 
click on that and it'll take you to this and what you're going to see you're going to see an interactive map which is you know the old rock in a pond and it ripples out it's exactly what happened with an earthquake pressure's got to go somewhere right felt report five people reported that uh, filling it and that you know that was over water so that would most definitely you know kind of fall into that low number right there shake map same thing they use their equipment there and the technology to decide how far out it was at what Richter level, you know, on the seismographs. So, and what we're looking at, and the most important one, guys, is the pager one. This one will tell you the percentage chances of estimated fatalities and estimated economic loss. Okay? Um, both of which are very important to a lot of people. And it's directly related to population density and what part of the world you're in. If your building codes suck, man, that is horrible. Because a lot of times those places are just not financially able to bring those codes up. So, unfortunately, that is one of the, the drawbacks to all that. And so, if you, this is the most important thing for me is fatalities, number one. Number two would be massive economic loss because more fatalities are generated from people not having food to eat and everything else. So... Just putting it out there like that. Alright guys, I'm going to leave you th with this imaging right here. But I want to say something here real quick. Well, before I do that, guys, you know, that does look kind of like a barber pole. If you look at it, it's spiraling on both sides of the sun. This is one of the strangest CMEs I've ever seen. So, I, that's what I want to put out there on that. But I want to talk about something else too here real quick while you guys are watching this. I'll zoom in. Um, listen. If you guys are feeling fear from anything that you're watching on me or anybody else that reports on any of this stuff, walk away from it, please. Do yourself a favor. Do your family a favor. Get your head right. Then come back. Okay? I have to do, I have to do it all the time, guys. I look at this stuff all the time, and frankly, it gets depressing. It causes me some anxiety sometimes where I have to really just back off and tell myself, listen, quit trying to control something you can't. Don't worry about it. If you're worried about it, you're still trying to control it. But you also know that you can't control it. So again, like I said, that's a circle and it makes you crazy. Okay? So don't fall into that. Don't listen to all the people claiming doom and gloom all, gloom and doom all the time. Okay? Don't do that. Because you, won't, you just won't make good decisions because you'll start feeling really bad about stuff. Geopolitically. This thing right here, all the stuff we're having in space, is it related? I most certainly think so. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That's the question. What's trying to hide the other? If we can all figure that out. But what I want to say, guys, again, no fear. If you're feeling that, you'll make bad decisions when you're fearful. So, I'll leave it at that. God bless. Yahusha saves and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.